Greetings, I'm Pyri Takkunen, game designer, dreamweaver, visionary, and your host tonight for the Finnish Game Incubator Demo Day of 2022. We have eight awesome pitches coming up, showcasing the games and teams from the current batch of the Finnish Game Incubator. After the pitches, we will host a live Q&A session on Discord, where you can meet the developers and grill them with your questions. But before that, a shameless plug for the Tampere Game Hub. The Tampere Game Hub is there to support and promote game studios and game development teams located in the Tampere region. The Game Hub is run by Tomi Toikka and Joni Lappalainen together with the city of Tampere and Business Tampere, with the shared goal of generating more game development know-how, game companies and game jobs in Tampere. The game dev scene in Tampere is a vibrant ecosystem of roughly 40 companies, 300 or so employees, four schools focusing on game dev education, and strong support from the city of Tampere and other support organizations. The Tampere Game Hub is here to streamline this cooperation and help bring more gaming-related activity into the Tampere area. Our website, tampere.games, functions as a catalog of sorts, where you can easily find every game studio in the region, information about upcoming industry events, and basically everything you need to get your game game started in Tampere. Speaking of starting out, the Tampere Game Incubator was put together a couple of years ago to help promising teams and startups level up their game. The goals were pretty simple. Help teams out by providing pitch advice, mentorship and a steady flow of constructive peer-to-peer -peer feedback. It was a solid lineup, if I do say so myself, and a successful batch altogether with publishing deals and other worthy connections as a direct result of the program. Here's some photographic evidence of the 2019 batch in action, blissfully interacting in a world where people still got together under the same roof. Nothing was going to stop this program from coming back the next year, but yeah, uh, then COVID hit. For the incubator, this meant rebranding stuff and innovating a little, which is never a bad thing in games. We simply became the Finnish game incubator. Rising from the ashes of a world that once was, the Finnish Game Incubator is here to provide all of the goodies from the Tampere Game Incubator format to selected teams from all over Finland, for free, on Discord. With our fully remote program, we've been able to bring promising teams together with our amazing mentors, without any of the commute hassle. We've also partnered up with the Allman Institute to provide each accepted applicant with a free entrepreneurship degree upon successful completion of the program. With two successful batches, and a spin-off one in Pärnu, Estonia, the format has turned fruitful for all the parties involved. Even if Covid restrictions subside, we see no functional reason to revert back to the old version, so the Finnish Game Incubator will probably make a return in its current form this fall. Hold on to your butts and look out for that application form next September. Now before we move on to the main course, a quick word from one of our mentors. Hello everybody, this is Yuri Partanen from Sampo Games. I have been uh, fortunate to be one of the mentors, one of the six mentors in the Finnish Game Incubator this season again. Um, this time we had eight excellent teams consisting of 22 really special and, and uh, wonderful persons in these teams. Um, the teams have been working really really well on different kinds of game projects ranging from vr to console games to pcs to mobile and uh, during these sessions that we have been having uh, mentors with the teams we have been supporting the teams in different types of of different uh, questions and and uh, difficulties ranging from uh, um, building the financial structure for the company to monetizing your different games and and how to actually recruit new people into the teams. Different kinds of scenarios and problems and uh, we have a lot of fun um, in in fixing and, and figuring out what to do next. Um, Finnish Game Incubator uh, has been organized by the uh, Tampere Game Hub and, and, uh, and uh, it has been a good system uh, to boost uh, young teams to become more professional and move into the game industry. And this is something we need in, 
in the Finnish game industry in the future as well. This will provide the industry with fresh teams and fresh talent and, and also experience to uh, people that are going into the industry. And now, um, after these mentoring sessions, uh, this responsibility of going forward uh, is then transferred to Pyry and, and also to the teams. And I will be following uh, with a keen eye the future of these teams and, and wish all the best in the future as well to everybody involved. Thank you. On behalf of the Finnish Game Incubator, I would like to thank all of the mentors for showering our game teams with their industry knowledge and experience. With help from the FGI coaches, Joni Lappalainen and yours truly, these fine teams harness their learnings and creativity to the pitches you are about to see. Without further ado, let's start the show. First up, we have some mythological stuff that is sure to keep you in their ote. Make way for One Trick Entertainment and Lempo. Hi, I'm Esko from One Trick Entertainment. What you just saw was some gameplay footage from our first title, Lempo, that is in full production at the moment. Lempo is a premium game made with Unreal Engine 4. It is a story-driven puzzle exploration game with psychological horror elements set in Finnish folklore. Lempo is aimed at people who enjoy exploring mysteries and are not afraid to use their wits. Games like Myst, Alan Wake and Silent Hill prove that there is a market for games like Lempo. And the drum roll. We have a publishing deal for Lempo. And right now we are looking for, for angel investments to the company itself. We are a team of three people from different backgrounds. And we own 100% of One Trick and work full time in it. We want to let the world know Finnish mythology and folklore through video games. We already have a worldwide publishing deal for Lempo, which is under NDA, so please contact us if you want to have a chat about business. Even though we are only a small team, we've achieved quite a lot in a short time. We also have a professional sound designer working as a freelancer in our first project, and a team hungry to learn, connect and develop ourselves and not just the games. We want to make high quality games for PC and consoles. We aim to grow as quickly as our financials allow because we want to do projects with higher scope. We also believe you have to sell games to make games. One Trick wants to be a valued employer and a liked workplace for all the people joining us. As a token of our commitment towards these values, we are also sponsoring the Namibian soccer team Windhoek Football Club, whose goal is to improve the life quality of the local kids from poor backgrounds. In 2020, we started the development of Lembo in our spare time. In 21, we had our first closed demo test. In autumn 21, we got the chance to participate in Finnish Game Incubator, and in January 22, we signed a publishing deal and founded our company. Now we look to find funding to help us grow and Lempo will be out. We are looking for investors with valuable experience from game industry or financing. We are just starting our first funding round, which will be closing before June 22. We are seeking for 30 to 50,000 euros for prototyping our next project, applying for Business, Tempo, Business Finland Tempo Fund and for growing our team. 
multiple investors are welcome. For now, our strategy is publisher funding over VC, and that is why we are now looking for angel investors who are willing to work with publishers. We want to build our brand carefully while taking care we deliver top quality gaming experiences for our customers. We look far at work near. What it means is that we plan ahead, prioritize and do our homework. Keeping a balance between artistic ambitions and commercial viability is important. Last but not least, uh, we also have our logo printed in uh, too many things. So join us and make sure you get yours. You can contact, contact us if you have any questions at all. Thank you for your time. Well, at least naming wise, that humble trio underestimated the amount of tricks they have up their sleeves. Next up, we have another local delicacy to feast your eyes on. As we all know, game development is a skill that requires time and effort, the allocation of which is sometimes difficult. What this two-man team realized is that you can always get good. Hi, my name is Mikko Eres, and we are Kidwood Games. Today, I'm going to talk to you about our latest game, Cyberpunk Turret Neon Rios. The game is a free-to-play casual shooter with a futuristic cyberpunk theme. The game is targeted for fans of casual shooters and roguelike games. It has beautiful neon graphics and stunning visual effects. It is made for mobile and at the moment only developed for Google Play Store. In Cyberpunk Turret, you face endless waves of enemies. Every few waves, you are presented with three unique cards, from which you can only choose one. With these cards, you can upgrade your turret, and with some luck, you can create powerful builds and deadly combinations. With this randomized upgrading system, every run is different and exciting. The game has intuitive, easy-to-learn controls, so anyone can play the game regardless of how much they have experience in games. Your goal is to create the ultimate weapon, and along the way, pick up some game-changing power-ups. In addition to all of this, the game has amazing cyberpunk EDM music tracks and deep sound effects that really make you immersed in the game. We believe this game can attract players from all kinds of games, because it combines the most successful elements from multiple genres, especially from casual shooters and roguelike games. We understand that retention is one of the most important factors, so we have focused on replayability on our design. So with this in mind, we have implemented different systems to improve it. The game follows a basic free-to-play monetization model. It has multiple ways to encourage the player to watch ads and spend money on microtransactions. The in-game shop offers multiple game-changing upgrades that can appeal to the player. About Kidgood Games, we are a two-person team, the other member being Tony Ramek. We have experience with multiple common projects, and we both have years of experience with gaming. In Kidgood Games, we have the ability to design and create games in a short time period. We do our best to focus on innovative and profitable game designs. In addition to all of this, we are also both currently studying user experience in Tampere University. In the end, games are essentially experiences, so with our background, we feel that we are able to create games with a unique touch. What we are offering is a ready-to-ship game. The production of the game has been self-financed. The next step for us is to find a publisher. In the future, we will focus on updates and adding new, exciting content for the game. So, what are we actually looking for? We are looking for an awesome publisher to finance early market tests for the game, and to handle all the marketing and user acquisition for the game. That's all about Cyberpunk Turret for today. If you are interested, please be in contact with us and make sure to check out our other games from Google Play Store. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Gitgood.
never go bad. Now, have you ever had a dream that um, that you had to and you could program anything? Well, this team certainly did. Give it up for Script Deprived and Dream Script. Hello everybody, my name is Marku Hartikainen, I am producer and lead programmer of our puzzle game called DreamScript. In DreamScript player plays and programs the game at the same time and that is the main mechanic and hook of the game. DreamScript is an experimental first person puzzle game which appeals to many audiences. DreamScript is suitable for puzzle game fans, adventure game fans, programming enthusiasts, educators and schools. Age recommendation is 7+. Dreamscript's platform is PC because player needs a keyboard to reprogram the environment. Player can for example spawn objects, change their masses, size and state of matter, shrink themselves, etc. Currently supported programming mechanics are variables, if statements, comparison operators, increment, decrement and comments. Player will learn these concepts during the gameplay and doesn't need to know anything about programming beforehand. DreamScript's gameplay loop consists of exploring the environment, reprogramming it and solving puzzles. But there are also lots of fun side activities. Player can spend time finding collectibles, aka rubber ducks, unlock achievements, read programming guide, create new levels with the in-game level editor and share them through Steam Workshop. DreamScript's story campaign itself lasts about 3 to 5 hours. DreamScript is a premium game. We are trying to get the game accessible to all possible PC game storefronts with price point between $15 to $25. And now let's go quickly through the project's timeline. DreamScript's development started in January 2020. Playable prototype was ready in June. First playtesting session was conducted in October the same year with 71 junior high school students. According to the playtesting results, 73% of the students had fun or very fun while learning programming with DreamScript. In fact, programming was perceived 64% more fun and 32% easier after the playtest. In May 2021, DreamScript won Bit1 Finnish Game Development Contest for students. According to the judges, DreamScript makes learning programming fun and it is a beautiful game. After the competition, we started looking for a publisher and funding for the project. We are going to have second playtesting session later this month with 50 colleague students. We are conducting a survey and think aloud screening, so there will be more interesting playtesting results coming up soon. DreamScript's planned release date is in October this year. Currently, our development team has three active members. At this point, our main focus is to find a suitable publisher for our game and make the game experience as fun as possible. If you are interested to learn more about our project, you can contact us via this email address shown here. Thank you for your attention and please leave your questions in the comment section. Thanks! Thank you, Script Deprived, and congratulations on the many successes you've already had along the way. Next in our lineup we have Adventure Toe Studios, another Tampere based duo with Astro Battlers TD. Hello, 
Hello attenders, I'm Rene and this is Astro Battlers PD, a game I'm making with Antti Hietikko from Adventure Toe Studios. Before hopping into gameplay, let's get the basics out of the way. In short, our game is a casual lane defense game for kids. Our customers will be 8 to 14 year old kids or lane and tower defense fans. We target mobile and PC platforms while having plans to port to consoles later. We go for cute and funny interactions with the kid and slimy fluffy enemies. While playing our game, you lose traps and abilities, which you can enhance with active and passive upgrades. As for exciting base features, we have scenarios that are challenge levels, endless mode and building and sharing your own levels. Our core loop consists of playing levels with gems, and your victories earn you stars that you spend in our skill tree to get passive upgrades to modify your gaming experience and grow more powerful. Inside levels, the player upgrades their traps with selectable upgrades which do not carry over. Our inspiration comes from games like Loon's Tower Defense and Plants vs. Zombies. Both games have sold millions of units, and we aim to go big too. We use upgrade systems of Bloons with Plants vs. Zombies game core structure and take notes from our genre, while introducing a new space theme and trusting cute graphics and sounds. Our premium game will cost about $4.99 on PC and consoles. The game is free for mobile. We will have in-game store as well to help with monetization. Now we have three different maps, multiple enemy variations and a bunch of upgrades. Everything in this game is scalable and we can make more content after release and utilize player generated content. We are getting ready for mobile soft launch. To make this game complete with full-time contribution, development is estimated to take about 8 months. And we are seeking about 40,000 euros for development and 6k for other costs. Final marketing costs are not included, which will be considerable for mobile once we prove our commercial scalability. We are a team of two. Antti has launched a game before, and has two launches this year, including Astro Battlers. I'm our programmer, and this will be my first commercial launch, though I have background in games production, studies, jams, and hobby projects. Adventure Toe Studios is making high-quality games for kids with a twinkle in the eye. Thank you for your time. Please check our website and social channels. Astro Battlers is also wishlistable on Steam. If you're interested, let's be in touch. You know, I used to be an adventurer like you, but then I stubbed my toe on this green screen and started coming up with corny segways. And speaking of transportation vehicles, how about a magic carpet? Here's Kuria from D-Real. Hello to everyone attending this demo day.
My name is Jussi and our company is called D-Real. And I'm here to tell you about our upcoming game called Kuria for virtual reality platforms. In Kuria, you get to cast spells by waving your hands as if you were drawing those magical patterns into air in real life. And your spells are stored in your spellbook where you select them and use to discard your enemies, for example. You also get to fly this magical carpet that is actually previously unseen in VR and something that we will believe will intrigue our core target audience of VR gamers who are looking to see and feel these new experiences. The gameplay also ex includes exploring the magical world of Kuria and solving many physics-based puzzles along the way. And those are really and truly engaging in virtual reality. Our company started working with VR a couple of years ago when the first truly commercially successful VR headset Oculus Quest was published. And since then we have released a couple of small games to try our wings uh, and now we are aiming for a bigger experience with our latest title, Kuria. But we are also interested in enabling and leveraging on the possibilities of VR and XR in other fields such as education or business applications. Or how about VR ports of already existing and successful games? Interesting. Our team has a collective experience of decades in IT and gaming, and we are committed on creating these first great experiences on VR. Uh, some of our members have already published several games for mobile, PC and console platforms. And we are passionate gamers and truly in excited of creating these awesome experiences for this emerging platform. Uh, we have already released Kuria as a demo, and now we are collecting feedback and comments on it, as it already includes all the core gameplay elements. And we are now looking for a seed fund for us to enable to apply for a Tempo grant from Business Finland, and enable the production of full version of Kuria for MetaQuest and PC VR platforms, at least. The fund will be mainly directed towards creating more content on the core game engine and to polish it to make it really visually even more appealing. So, we are asking for a 30,000 seed fund, uh, but we are also looking for a business partner who truly understands the possibilities of VR. 10 million Quest 2 headsets sold by Meta previously known as Facebook, and billions of funding and generated revenue uh, on the ecosystem should give you a clue of what type of future the market here already will have. So, if you got interested in our project or our goals and would like to get involved, we are eager to share you more details, so please be in contact. Until then, thank you very much and have fun. Thanks, dear Real. Now let's fly our way over to another team operating in the realm of extended realities. Take it away, Fly AR. Hi everyone, I'm Eros Salminen from FlyR Augmented Reality Studio and I'm here to tell you about our game TEMP. It's an asymmetrical cooperative puzzle adventure happening in your living room. In the game, uh, the players are traveling through time and space to maintain peace and order. 
you can get an idea of the gameplay if you imagine a crossroads uh, where I expect you to die. I mean, it's keep talking and nobody explodes. With a little bit of Doctor Who on top. In case you're not familiar, I expect you to die is a VR escape room game. Whereas Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes is a hybrid VR cooperative puzzle game. In TMP, the players are solving puzzles within their own environments, but they need help from their friends. Everyone has a different set of pieces to the puzzle, and to get through the obstacles, everyone needs to work together and communicate. We are building our game on top of spatial AR technology, uh, which lets us do VR-like VR gameplay uh, within any space with just a mobile phone. So players get to turn their living room into an adventure full of traps and puzzles. Uh, in this context, VR-like gameplay refers to the possibility of players moving around their own home uh, while exploring a digital world and, and the possibility of interacting with that world with uh, motion inputs, kind of. Uh, currently, we are finishing our demo, uh, what we call the Apocalypse. Uh, this is a project funded by the Promotion Center for Audiovisual Culture, AVEC. Um, it is currently anchored to Helsinki Railway Square, and we are building it to evaluate and showcase spatial AR as a game platform. Next, our plan is to, is to take the tester feedback from our demo and use that to fine-tune our game design while we are validating that spatial AR works as a game platform. We're then going to take the demo and build a game that works in every living room and every backyard around the world. This scales it up in the business sense. A little bit about Fly AR. We are a small studio, two creative engineers and two engineering creatives, and we are creating highly custom B2B AR experiences, working with a lot of different kinds of clients. Um, we have industry, research, board games, packaging, museums, and everything in between. Our mission is to make everyone smile when they try out augmented reality, especially if it's their first time. And um, we are determined to keep doing that. We're looking for funding to bring our game to the next level. So if you got interested or just want to talk about AR in general, send me a message and we can set up a call. Thank you very much. Exciting stuff from Fly AR. I wish I could still force the flying theme into the next introduction, but this bird apparently licks stuff so it doesn't tipu. I'll just let Olli Matti explain this to you. My name is Olli Matti Rautianen. What you just saw is a trailer of my upcoming 3D platformer game called Tip. I'm an indie game developer and teacher of game development with over 14 years of experience from the industry. I've shipped to various platforms from console to mobile. As you just saw in the trailer, Tipu is a game with very cute and colorful graphical style making it suitable game for players of all ages. Tipu is a character with one very special skill, extensive and snappy tongue. With this tongue, player can move between platforms and sometimes even pull platforms closer to the player. The game is filled with different kinds of obstacles, enemies and collectibles that Tipu can eat with his tongue. 
These collectibles help player to unlock new levels. These levels will be accessed from the game's hub world, which takes place up in the space. Tipu combines games like Super Mario 3D World and mainline Kirby games, ensuring that the player has the smoothest and most comfortable game experience possible. Short games like A Short Hike and Minute and their success have encouraged me that there is demand for these kind of shorter but sweeter game experiences. I started the de development of Tipu in early 2021. My intention is to ship the game later this year. So how can you help me to ship Tipu this year? I'm looking for a publisher. Publisher would ideally help me to market the game, localize the game to different markets, port it to the consoles, and maybe even turn Tipu into something bigger than just a game. So to recap, Tipu is a 3D platformer released later this year on major platforms. It will be priced around 5 to 10 euros. You can follow the game's development on my Twitter feed. I constantly post updates about how the development of the game is going. Please feel free to contact me if you have any more questions about Tipu. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Olli Matti. The less free time one has, the more satisfying it is to see passion projects emerge. Game development is demanding as it is, but doing it while studying full-time is a whole different animal. Our last pitch is from a Kovala-based student team, Datavi. Here's their project. Hello, I'm Willy from Team Datavi, and I'm here to present our game, working title, Project Godspeed. Team Datavi has four members and we all are students in fields related to game development. The game will be similar experience to Binding of Isaac or Wizard of Legend, but with platforming and 360 degree shooting. Team is mainly sci-fi but the player will travel through worlds with different themes, like Western and Cyberpunk. The visuals are a mix of pixel art, advanced lightning and post-processing, giving the game a unique look. This game is set to release on Steam and Nintendo Switch eShop. In this game, you play as a bounty hunter that chases criminals through strange dimensions. The main goal is to find and defeat the most dangerous enemies there are or die trying. Story is not the main focus here, but it offers intrigue and mystery through secrets and non-verbal storytelling. Dying restarts the game from the beginning, so learning it inside out is needed to get all the way to the end. The replayability is created through random level generation and random items that are available. Level generation system is different between worlds and requires player to change gameplay styles. Dozens of unique weapons and upgrades offer varied ways to take on challenges in the game. Tight controls and capability for vertical movement allows for fast and exciting combat. Fighting effectively requires reflexes, creativity and quick decision making from the player. Platforming offers additional challenges during combat. The player must not only keep track of the enemies, but the surroundings and the dangers in them as well. It also provides variety in gameplay and allows player to explore movement mechanics in a more calculated manner.
Bosses are the ultimate challenge and player must face one at the end of each level. They must explore the levels for weapons, upgrades and health to increase their odds of survival. If you are interested, feel free to send us email and check our pages. Thank you for listening. Godspeed, sons. You have now reached the end of the Demo Day pitch lineup. Next up, we will move over to the public Q&A event where you can present your questions to the game teams and coaches. I'll inform the video editor to put the link there and to every applicable comment field. See you there. Thanks for watching the Finnish Game Incubator Demo Day of 2022 and game on.